Live. Namashwaya, Susagadam, Vandanam, welcome you all for this special episode on Disha, the direction, the Disha, the direction, the direction towards your future, the direction towards your success, the direction towards your knowledge, and ultimately direction towards your life, being happy. And overall, this Disha is going to take you to a level of wisdomatism. And we have the first priority of praying the Almighty to take care of the entire globe as far as health is concerned today. So let us begin with just about 30 seconds invocation for the for the entire globe to be peaceful happy and in good health so all my all my students and parents just to stay for 30 seconds praying for the entire world to be happy loga samasta subino bhavantu Thank you so much for the prayers, and I'm sure that these prayers would have been heard across the world, and God will shower all of us with peace, happiness, and good health. So this is Medhu Krish reporting to you from Amanda Vishya Vidya Pinam, Etimade Kwaimbatur. And as all of you have gathered, is to know more and more and more of what Amrita Vishya Vidya Pidam is all about, especially on Amrita School of Engineering. So I would like to welcome you all on behalf of Amrita Vishya Vidya Pidam. And the next one and a half hours of our deliberation would go through the 3W1H. When I say 3W1H, the first W is why should you or why has so many students chosen Amrita in the last 15 to 20 years of his existence? And why should you all prefer and why should you join Amrita School of Engineering? So that is the first W. The second W is where has Amrita reached for the last couple of years of his existence? Where are we now? And the third would be, what is all about Amrita? What is there in Amrita? And what are the things that we must know about Amrita before you finally join us in the year 2020-2021? And the last letter is how. How about, how about Amrita? being so much heard across the universities in the world. So that how, why, where, and what is being answered today by three prominent personalities who represent mm -hmm. Amrita School of Engineering from Amrita Vishya Vidya Peter. So the first, the chief guest who is with us today is Dr. Sasangan Ramanathan, who is the Dean of Faculty of Engineering at Amada School of Engineering, who is here with us, who would inaugurate, has also inaugurate, will also be inaugurating this particular one and a half hours this year, and explain to us and taking us all through the entire Amada School of Engineering and let us know so many things that we didn't know so far. And I would like to introduce him, and before I do so, he will officially open this particular Disha for today and tomorrow. 
tomorrow it starts at 10 o'clock instead of 10.30. And let's have the entire profiling of Dr. Sasangan Ramnathan, who is the Dean, Faculty of Engineering and Professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Science, and who brings with him over 25 years of international research management and leadership experience. Dr. Ramnathan's focus and dedication is in preparing the next generation graduates for challenges in science, technology, engineering, and management. I want to underline this particular sentence of Dr. Ramnathan and repeat it. That Dr. Ramnathan's focus and dedication is in preparing the next generation graduates, and I'm sure each of you are listening to us, who are with us, is going to be the next generation graduates who will be taking science as a challenge, technology as a challenge, engineering as a challenge, management as a challenge, and his entire life and dedicating for preparing you all to be successful engineers of the future. Dr. Ramnathan is a strong believer in an educational process that promotes creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship while providing the students with strong fundamentals. After all, what is an engineer without creativity, innovation, and a sense of entrepreneurship? Dr. Ramanandan holds a PhD in chemical engineering from Claxton University, United States of America, and uh, joined Amrita with a strong background in managing alliances and collaborations with key industry partners and universities across the globe, which clearly proves he is a person into the corporates, the industry, and now into an university. Prior to joining Amrita, he served as the chief technology officer for a large US-based semiconductor capital equipment company heading their technology roadmap and strategy business development efforts. So we have a, a, a strong personality who is heading the School of Engineering across all the four campuses, starting from Coimbatore to Amrithapuri in Kollam in Kerala to Bangalore in Karnataka and Chennai in Tamil Nadu. Sir, we are indeed honored to have your presence here for this Disha. And may I now request our most respected deans to officially inaugurate and take on to his key address to our loving children who are waiting to hear from you, sir. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Krishnan Kuti. Om Namah Shivaya, everybody. A very good morning. And I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. Uh, that's the need of the hour. What happens most of the time um, before admissions or if you want to get into a college, make a decision about college, you parents and students tend to visit some of the campuses that are nearby <clears throat> or the ones that you're interested in. But unfortunately, this time, we're all stuck at home with very little mobility. So I think your decisions have to be made um, based on what you know and what you hear. So what I thought was um, it's not everything about Amrita. I will introduce you and talk about what we do at Amrita. But I also would want to address an initial part of my um, inauguration and the keynote address. The confusions and the complications that you all face. <clears throat> I'm sure as parents and students, you're probably, you know, trying to figure out what is the best approach, which one is the best college and a whole bunch of things. So what I would do is walk you through some of the steps, logical steps, and this is coming out of uh, my experience in industry. When I have interviewed candidates from great universities in the US and Europe, what are the things that I used to look for? Uh, when I want to recruit somebody. So I've, I've got that in mind. And when I joined Amrita in 2014, that's what I was looking at. And we have gone through a lot of changes in the way we teach. 
So I'll just briefly touch upon all of those and hopefully in the next 45 minutes. You'll have some clarity and some, you know, streamlined thought process on how you make your decisions. So let me share my screen and uh, allow me to walk through my presentation first and then hopefully, you know, if you have questions, we can definitely answer those questions towards the end of the presentation or whichever way Mr. Krishnan Kuti decides. But let me start with uh, what I think. And this has been um, a very thought through process in what I'm going to say now. So let me share my files with you. Uh, yes, the PowerPoint is visible now, sir. Yeah, I just need to. Slide yeah, yeah, I need to enable the audio also, I guess. So let me just make sure that I do that. OK. The slides, so uh, yeah. Yeah, it will show up now. OK, right. It is there. Oh. So it must have gone on full screen mode now. No, no, it's on full screen mode. Yes. OK, it's, it's okay. on full Thank screen. Please, and please uh, on. yeah, so very hearty welcome on behalf of Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pedam and the School of Engineering to all the attendees. I have a few uh, slides that m may have animation, so when I talk, I'll pause a little bit just to give you time to get to that screen. So pardon. A little delay in what I say. So. What I thought was start this with some confusion and complication because everybody can think of, um, you know, promoting and saying things that are so obvious, but people are scared or maybe not wanting to address the not so obvious. So what I thought was address two points that may be of interest to parents and potential students. Choosing a good engineering college. Now it can be difficult, complicated, tiresome and very often frustrating because you really don't know, you know, whether college A or B or C is good. And uh, the first part of my presentation or discussion would be more on generic things. You know, it's very simple. If you got admissions into IIT, you're not going to be confused so much. But then if you got IITs within IITs, you will be deciding whether it's IIT Delhi or IIT Madras or IIT Bombay. There is still some confusion. Then the next confusion would be, would I want to take uh, this program or that program? For example, computer science or mechanical or electronics or civil. Now the choice of program is actually individual dependent, I think. It's very important and this is from my own experience. I'm a chemical engineer. You all heard that. Um, chemical engineer means immediately parents and uh, students think of petroleum refinery. That's not the only thing that's about chemical engineering, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But this confusion that you're all going through is tiered and caused by people um, that talk to you. What you hear, what you see about job prospects after degree completion is what's causing all these confusion. Now what you hear, what you um, see are things that have happened in the past. And nobody has told you what is going to happen in the future. And you're not graduating tomorrow. If you joined in the year 2020, the earliest you graduate is 2024. And anybody who looks for a solid career or a good progression in career has to give him or her at least five years from the first job. So we're looking at 2024 to 2030. That's the time frame we should be looking at. So don't kill yourself too much about this job prospects. Jobs are available. It's about how and where you knock the opportunities and how you open the door for yourself. It's frozen. So 
Sorry, my computer screen is frozen. Just give me a minute. No issue, sir. No issue, sir. Take your time. Take your time, sir. No problems at all. <clears throat> we'll wait. We'll wait. It happens. Just give me a second, please. Yeah, you're back. It's shared now. Okay. Yeah, it's shared. It's shared. Uh, you can uh, go for the slideshow. Yeah. Um. Is it back on slideshow? Yes, very much on the back. It's very much back. You can okay. carry on. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Oh. Not at all. Not at all. Issue. So. Let's see. I mean, I put in two problems. Hopefully those are the problem statements that all of you are going through. They may be um, other problems that you still are looking at, but that can be part of the discussion. So let's try and sort this out. Now, if you look at what's happened in the past for all of you, the students, what you score in your high school, the the promotion to next grade is just based on scores, whether you pass and you pass with a certain percentage, you move up. So you go from 8th to 9th to 10th to 11th to 12th. And even your college admissions is just based on tests and scores. You have not really met anybody to prove your skills yet. So the first basic degree that you get is extremely important because moving forward in the slide, you see that BTEC to masters to PhD. So there are multiple options for any student. You can after your bachelor's degree, look for a job and you get a great job and build a career out of it. Some of you may want to go for higher studies and you jump to the next level. And then of course, after that you go for a job and a good career. And may, some of us may go for the next level of degree, then eventually job. Nobody is studying and learning and, and doing all this toiling for sitting idle. At the end of the day, you need a job. So the basic degree, the university or institute where you get your degree is extremely important. That reputation matters because it, it will stick with your resume for a very long time. If you don't do pursue any higher education, your first degree is extremely important. The name matters. If you jump to the second degree, the, the value of the first degree diminishes slightly. The second, the highest degree takes a little bit more precedence. And if you go for the next level, which is a PhD, the, where you get your degree, that degree carries more weight and the bachelor's may kind of diminish even further. However, sitting after 12th standard, you don't know whether you would do your master's or PhD, but all of you are very clear. You're not going to do your BTEC or bachelor's degree to sit idle. You need a job. So reputation of this university is extremely important. So I've told you there is a progression. You know, you do your bachelor's, you get a job or you can move for higher education. Let's just come back and focus on bachelor's. What have you done so far in your high school, which is my first bubble on the top um, circles? You've been trained to remember and understand. Basically what you've done is remembered everything that you can from a book and many of you might have understood a lot of it, but at the end of the day, it's, it stays at remember and understand and you write your exam, you finish and you move on. When you come to a first bachelor's degree, and here I have split the engineering curriculum into four years, I've split them into two because you just cannot be an expert overnight. You need the time to prepare yourself. So you start moving from where you left off, understand, to apply, to analyze, these are very important characters of us of an engineer and I'll show you what what it means. In the first two years you're trained. And this when I use the word training, it's very simple, but 
to get through an effective and world class training, you need very good quality faculty. So the reputation of a university is not because of its name, but because of the fundamental character. The faculty quality is very important and it takes time to build. The third and fourth year when you go, you're into this analyze, evaluate and create. I've got this pyramid here. The pyramid represents two things. If you remember, you look at remember and understand if you fit in a lot of dots in it, you can fit many, 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 many dots in remember, which means a lot of people can remember things. Then when you go up to the next level, understand fewer dots will fall out. So you get fewer dots into understand. And then as you move up into the pyramid, you see that the 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 degree of difficulty or how you look at where I want to go starts moving up and it gets a bit more difficult, bit more difficult. It goes, you have to go through some sort of good training and that's where the faculty come in. And the number of dots also will start decreasing. It's very easy to visualize that. Now I've got two sort of wordings there. At the bottom you see engineering degree holder. What does that mean? I mean, everybody knows you can fire, you can get admissions to an engineering program anywhere, anytime in these days. So if you didn't move up this pyramid and you just sort of got stuck with remember and understand and maybe a little bit of apply, you are an individual with an engineering degree. Yes, you have a degree, but are you an engineer? Questionable. Now, if you are in the upper half of apply and all the way to create, you are truly an engineer. Now, normally I like to say that you are an engineer with a degree, not a person with an engineering degree. Makes a whole bunch of difference, a lot of difference between the two terminologies. So what we do and what you should be looking at is how can you become a true engineer? When you do that, everything else falls in place. Now, what does it take to be a true engineer? And hopefully the, I, my next box has come to your uh, visual. If you want to be a true engineer, the fundamental aspect is faculty quality. I mean, it's very obvious. I, if I asked a lot of you students now, you would say that you would never want to teach because you've listened and listened and listened your whole life, 12 years of schooling. So you think teaching is difficult and I'll tell you teaching is extremely difficult. So the quality of faculty in any institution becomes the foundation and the pillar for its reputation. Now I might be a good teacher, but if I'm not friendly, I'm not encouraging, I'm not mentoring, I've lost half my talent. So the next characteristic of a university is that faculty are one, very encouraging, and they create an atmosphere of friendliness where you have the openness to go talk to them. I can read a lot of things, but I may not understand everything. What do I have to do? I have to go ask somebody. Now, why Amrita? What, where has Amrita reached? You just change that. Why do I have to do it this way? What is the implication? Where am I gonna use this? What should I do? These are the questions you should be asking as an engineer. So you move from remember to create. The curriculum should be rich in the sense we should be able to look at where the industry is going, not keep uh, teaching the same thing that we did in the 1990s. And the curriculum should be more student centric, the pedagogy. Pedagogy means the way we, we learn things. I don't call teaching, I call learning. Learning is different from teaching. And everything should be learner centric, which is student centric. That's how you are encouraged and motivated to go transition from study to learn. And that's what makes you a true engineer. So these are very fundamental characteristics. And if these are missing in a place, you'll be stuck with an engineering degree. If you choose a place where you've got all these characteristics, you can be a true engineer. Now I said, you have to transition from study to learn. Study is remember, understand. Learning makes you move up the pyramid. We learn to drive, isn't it? If you want a driver's license, you don't study a book. You can study a book to know about a car, 
But if you really want a driver's license, you must learn how to drive. Learning how to drive requires you to sit in the vehicle and actually start operating it. There is a difference between your high school and engineering college. So you should be trained to learn. So any institute that has these characteristics can give you that quality education. And that's what should be your first set of criteria before you choose something. And you look at that smiley on top, he looks a bit satisfied because the few smileys before this, they were all confused. Now, education for parents is an investment. It's not an expense. Um, what you do today, you're gonna, your son or daughter is going to benefit over their entire life. And for potential students, no matter where you go, what you do, don't think you're spending time in a college. You are actually investing your time in learning. Now, if you can understand all of this, this investing time in learning is an important thing because that's what's going to open up opportunities. Now, what program do I choose? I, I kind of gave you an overview of how to choose a university. Next is, okay, now everybody is rushing for this program, that program. I was a chemical engineer and you heard that I worked in a semiconductor industry and I thought I would connect the dots here in this next couple of slides. What you have to fundamentally understand is all engineering degrees impart basic skills with a little bit of knowledge into specific domains, but at the foundation level, you are trained and you are confident enough to identify and define problems and come up with solution. And that's the basic engineering trait. For that, you need to be able to understand, analyze, evaluate, apply, and create. This is what you learn in the four years. And the reason it takes that much time is because you've been memorizing and partly understanding. And this transition is not that easy. And you get some specialization in specific domain. Now, which program has better job prospect? That's a question. That's why we are all running after certain programs and maybe not thinking that the other programs are relevant. I think the first and foremost, if you want to climb up that pyramid, the student's interest of study should be the foremost. If I'm not interested in something, I will never excel. You will never have that passion to learn. So first, see what your skills are, the potential students. What are you interested in? I'll tell you the job opportunities are there. I'm not making a blanket statement. And look at four to ten years from from here. You look at the bottom. I mean, there are people that will go to US. 20% of Amrita students um, go abroad after bachelors. 80% stay back in India. They have a great job. So you have options. It's not like you're going to be with a degree and got nothing to do. Now you look at the initiatives within India. Going abroad is your choice and we have means and ways to create those opportunities for you. If you stay in India, you've got Make in India, which is directly related to number three in that box, product development. It's a very simple terminology, product development. But it covers so many, many, many products. Have you seen a TV made in India? Don't we all buy TVs made in Korea, China, Japan, US, Europe? Just simple example. How many washing machines are out there? Just day to day consumer electronics. We will start making them. If you look at a hospital, 80% of the hospital is gadgets, equipments. Who do you think makes those them? Engineers. But where are those engineers? Today, India imports all of them. Now this make in India will transition us from being more self-reliant. Atma Nirbhar Bharat. I'm giving you all this information because you should not panic, regardless what university you choose. Keep this in mind. Digital India. Imagine if we didn't have cashless payment and digital technology today. If you had to use cash, for all your transactions today. How would you have coped up with this COVID-19 pandemic? So all these initiatives are rolling and clean and green India. That's where all your 
civil engineering, material science, a whole bunch of streams are buried in it because you're not going to construct roads and buildings the same way you used to do it in the 1980s and 90s. Things are changing and will change drastically. Digital India. I just had number five, cybersecurity. How many of you feel safe that your transactions are good, your data and the bank is safe, your insurance data is safe, your other number is safe? Cybersecurity is an excellent and high potential growth market and an industry. And Indians everywhere across the world are known for their smartness. Trust me, every Indian, if you've cleared Amrita entrance, you are a smart kid. You don't have to worry about double guessing yourself. There are significant job opportunities for every smart engineer, smart engineer. Smart engineers are the ones that are true engineers. So just connecting the dots. So if I were to give you an example to break this myth of job opportunities. I don't know if these kids have ever seen a phone like this. I've seen it and many of my colleagues might have seen it. <clears throat> this is a rotary dial. It's it's not even existent in many places now in India. This is in the 1980s and all that. Now if you look at this telephone. If you look at the, the kind of engineers that used to work, it's electronics, engineering, electrical, mechanical, communication, but they worked in silos. You know, they, they didn't talk much to each other. I would do my job. You do your job. You do your job and the guy will come with a cable connected to your house. If it doesn't work, you will have to wait. I think parents would understand the nuances of how these connections used to work in the 1990s. So it's a silo. You know, that's how I studied my engineering. Mechanical means mechanical. I, and there's got nothing to do with chemical engineering or electronics engineering. If you go to 1990s, you've got this uh, little mobile phone. I'm, I'm skipping the cordless. Cordless phone is gone. Let's say we migrate to this uh, mobile phone, which is not a smartphone, but it makes you call and you can keep it in your pocket and go. Now you see we added this computer science guy in here because now it requires a bit more sophistication. You've got a whole bunch of PCBs that need to talk. And uh, so now and you see the circles getting closer. Now these engineers cannot be sitting somewhere working in silo. They had to get closer. That means the interdisciplinary nature started in the 1990s. Now when we got to the basic smartphones, um, these people had to interact even more. Now you see the circles are over overlapping. This is in the 2000s. Now, how many of you think the cell phone manufacturing requires chemistry or chemical engineering? A lot of you would have never guessed, but we got a whole bunch of new streams coming in. Again, these people had to work very closely. You see chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, chemists, physicists, manufacturing engineering because that became a little bit of a bottleneck. So when you transition from 1990s to 2000 in the span of about 10 to 15 years, the entire landscape of how engineers work, how many new domains are needed for something that we never thought would be beyond communication and electronics engineering. Now if I go to 2010, now you've got this beautiful smartphone. It's got so many applications that we do everything sitting in front of a smartphone. We don't go anywhere. We don't talk to each other anymore. We talk to our smartphones more than we talk to anybody else. Now what happened with this is now all these guys are all totally collapsed. You, is you don't look at your department and your program in, in a tunnel mode. You don't look at I'm an electronics engineer, so I would not know anything about mechanical or electrical or computer science. You must know something of the other things because all these guys have to work together to make that smart phone very smart. Now why did, and you look at that little chip and that's the beauty. That little chip in a forefinger is what is driving all this uh, interdisciplinary nature of this industry. <clears throat> so a smartphone now requires a lot more disciplines 
And the reason is there is more functionality, more features and silo attitude will not work. Now this gave birth to this emerging areas. Electronics and computer engineering, computer communication, electrical and computer. So the domains have collapsed. And these are some of the new programs and I have not listed cybersecurity in it because at the end of the day, if your phone has to be safe and secure, you must need something embedded in the phone, whether it's in, in, the ter in terms of software or hardware to protect your data. You don't want your photos to go out, do you? I don't think so. That security covers the entire thing. So now you look at the complexity. When this becomes complex, your choice of program should not be complex anymore because the opportunities in a mobile market, I'm just giving you an example, and you can take any, any product anywhere in any industry, you've got the same feature now. I've got this a little semiconductor fabrication. That little chip that you're seeing on the finger is made in buildings with huge equipments. Those buildings would be the size of a simple, very big airport, your airport in Hyderabad or Chennai. These are not airports like in Coimbatore or Trivandrum. These are much, much larger, fully automated. So that's where the data, data analytics and all other expertise coming because to make that one little chip, you need to invest more than 10,000 crores. And that's where the industry is going. This is just one example. If you take an automotive industry, I just took a cartoon. You look at the number of components and the way we use the cars come out now. Everything is electronic. Everything is smart. It will tell you where you're going. It will tell you when your tire pressure is not good. I mean, so many features, sensors, communication, all of this is embedded into it. Now, instead of just being, a, if you thought car, you would think mechanical engineering. It's not. It's mechanical plus a whole bunch of other domains. If you go look at green technology, future buildings, future roads, the way buildings are connected, buildings are connected to your gadget. It requires a complete slew of um, interdisciplinary um, functionalities. So jobs aren't a big problem. You shouldn't think that job, 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 job is there. You should be thinking, how do I migrate from? Just remember and understand to being able to analyze, evaluate and create. The creativity is what will get you the best career you can think of. So I think what I've tried to do is kind of walk you through, and this is in general applicable to any university you choose. However, choose the university that will make it happen. And that's where Amrita School of Engineering comes in. Uh, Mr. Krishnan Guti, am I blowing the time off or am I okay? I no, need no, you another are, you are, you are, 15 are, minutes or so. Yeah, absolutely. Please go ahead, sir. No issues at all. Okay. So if you look at School of Engineering, we have four campuses, Amritapuri, Coimbatore, Bangalore and Chennai. Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu again. And everything that we do and what, wh where we are today and who we are today is because of the vision and the drive from our Chancellor Amma. She's also known as Mata Amritanandamai Devi. If you look at the first bullet, education for life, I think it's an important thing. We all want a job, but you don't want to just have a degree and not learn the essence of life. Who you should be, how you should behave, how you should be a citizen, how you should look at others. These are all part of this whole education for life. And what we do in this university, I mean, we have plenty of funding from so many government agencies. We don't just spend the money to do some research. That research has to reach the society. There should be some benefit of us spending time and money. It's again, I call it investing time and money. You don't spend time. 
So this is what our found fundamental um, foundation of the university is education for life. And we are, we want all our students, the next generation, and that's my passion. I mean, personally. Creative solutions to problems. I'll tell you the difference between what I learned in India and when I went to US for my masters. There I spent more time defining the problem. You can see the problem, but then you have to define it clearly. So then you come up with a solution. In India, what I was taught was you write the problem first quickly. Then you spend all your time looking for a solution. When you get to 70% of it, then you find out that the problem definition is not correct. So there is a difference in the way we look at things. You know, you can take more time, but define the problem properly. That's the most important aspect. Then that creativity will set in automatically. The university values and the holistic education, I just mentioned it in the previous slide, that directly comes from our Chancellor Amma. Hopefully the slides are moving. So these are uh, some statistics about yes, our campuses. It is moving, it is moving sir, I confirm. Okay, thank you. Now all the campuses are easily accessible by flights, trains and buses. So there is no uh, issue trying to get to the campus. And the three campuses, Coimbatore, Amrutapuri and uh, Bangalore have been there for more than 20 years. Chennai campus was an engineering institute for about 12, 15 years. We got acquired that institute and we have converted everything into an Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam curriculum. So it is not a building that we constructed uh, from ground up. It was already an existing engineering college under Anna University. So the infrastructure and everything else is there. We have onboarded new faculty who got trained in Coimbatore campus and Bangalore campus for about 18 months, one and a half years. And then now they are in Chennai taking care of Chennai campus. And this is important because faculty quality is of utmost importance. Uh, people across India knows that um, it's difficult to get a job in uh, with Amrita. Um, the recruitment process is quite stringent and we just don't recruit people because we have to recruit. We recruit people regardless when we find a good resume, we recruit them. Now the School of Engineering Leadership um, for the four campuses. I am situated uh, in Coimbatore campus. <clears throat> I'm also Dean Faculty of Engineering, which means the entire curriculum and the academic processes come under me and it's the same across all campuses. Implementation is the same across all campuses. Now, I have highlighted some things. I've highlighted Clarkson University USA for me. Dr. Sridham Devanathan, who is a principal at B Bangalore campus, he got his PhD from Iowa State University in USA. Dr. Balakrishnan Shankar got his PhD in mechanical engineering from University of Texas in USA. And Dr. Shankar, who is the principal of Chennai campus, got his PhD from the best in India, Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. And then he did his postdoctoral fellow. The PDF stands for postdoctoral fellow in University of Nimegan, Netherlands. Now, why am I saying all this, highlighting these uh, international degrees? The outlook and the way we want to conduct, go through an academic um, curriculum preparedness, the richness in it, the way we teach, all that comes from what we know should be the way it should be taught. So when we come, come up with ways to teach and learn, the ways to evaluate and ways to encourage the students. It comes from a global experience. I'm so glad to be working with um, my three, three of my colleagues, fantastic individuals. Now that's the core, best in class faculty. You can talk about uh, quality. How many of you, you may all know about uh, Tirupati Temple. It's very famous. Millions of devotees go there every year. Do all the temples have such crowd? No. Why? Because maybe, I don't know, the priest that did all the puja in the early days had that passion and the shraddha that they could turn something, a stone or anything you call it, 
into something unique. The Shraddha, that quality of the priests has made that name. Not all temples, the same way. You can have so many universities, but a lot of them cannot boast about quality. The curricular design and stakeholder input, that comes from the international experience that you saw about the leadership. Innovative pedagogy. It is not just the four of us. It is every individual faculty across all campuses understand the need for change and the way we should make sure that students learn. This comes from bottom up. And we have a fantastic academic process. Now this combination will definitely take you to that true engineer category. And I have some statistics for it, which will speak for itself. So the goal is you get to be a true engineer. And these are all the ingredients that get you there. Now, if you look at quality of faculty in this slide, the middle part, middle slab where you see publication, citation, research funding, that is more research centric. We encourage our bachelors and master's students to get involved in research because what you do will reach the society. When you see that, your confidence level will go through the roof. When you are confident, nobody else can stop you. Job will come to you. Great career will come to you. So that self-confidence is the first and foremost factor, and that's reflected in the top right-hand box where you see student awards. Our students are just prolific. You call any hackathon, you look at any newspaper. In fact, I would say you go to amrita.edu, check the student's corner. You will see students winning in almost every domain of engineering in India and abroad. That's because they are confident. They are confident because the bottom left. Our faculty, they are of quality because they have been recognized by industry, by governments for their quality in teaching, quality in research, quality in guiding and mentoring the students. So that's the crux of this, this particular slide. Now, when you talk about library resources, I'll just touch on it. Access to library across all campuses is available and library has a very rich resource in terms of digital content. So we have migrated significantly from hard copies to digital content because the future generation loves to read everything from their palm. That's and it's it's OK. We're all migrating, we should move and we should make sure that we provide the resources for what is best for the students. So we have best in class library facility. Degrees we offer on the top left hand corner, you see we have bachelor's, master's, doctorate and international program. Now at the bottom, I've given you some sample universities. What is important is we have fantastic collaborations established with universities, universities in the US. You see a number 98 in Europe, 88 and Asia Pacific and all that. So 200 plus collaborations, active collaborations. Our students go for a BTEC and a master's. You look at the bottom of the screen. You see a BTEC-MS. You, you see a MTEC-MS. BTEC-MS. I mean, uh, Shubha will talk a lot about it in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes if I get it done. She will tell you what are the pathways to get that done? So with 200 plus collaborations, students have plenty of opportunities to start looking at various other opportunities outside India. What are the programs we have? We have chemical engineering, aerospace, civil and mechanical. Then you have this electronic, electrical electronics communication and computer. I'm telling you, it's not easy to just call yourself. I'm an electronics engineer anymore. You will have to be a well rounded individual who knows a little bit more than just electronics engineering. If you look at the bottom, we say it's 2016 to 2020. We've introduced 10 new programs, five in the undergraduate and five in postgraduate in emerging areas. Cyber security, artificial intelligence. These are some emerging areas and the the need for resource, human resource in these domains is tremendous. 
Now, these people cannot work in silos again. So don't think cybersecurity guy can sit and do his work and he doesn't have to interact. No, he or she has to interact with a whole bunch of people. It is all interdisciplinary. There is no mechanical only. There is no civil only. All of you, it becomes an engineer. You become an engineer basically. These are the programs offered. Now this, I, I'm sure all of you have already looked through it because it is uh, available in our admissions website. I'm sure you've gone through your choices of programs and campuses. And I've highlighted again the programs that have been introduced in the emerging areas. That's in the purple. Now, which campus is better? What should I do? I'm talking about Amrita now. The curriculum is the same across all campuses. So. There is a faculty of engineering, which is a large set of faculty who form a committee. We decide based on input from previous our alumni, basically students who graduated out of Amrita, industry experts, eminent academicians and our internal people. So the curriculum is decided and once it's decided, it is implemented across all campuses in the same way. The course plan evaluation method and everything else grade rules are all similar across all campuses. So it really doesn't matter which campus you're in. It's the same quality of education across all campuses. And that's why I said I have great fantastic three colleagues who are with me. The four of us ensure that this quality is maintained. The placement opportunities on the academic excellence is the same. Regardless of your campus. Now students across all campuses get the same kind of placement opportunities. And this table that you see here. I said why Amrita? I said don't worry about jobs. Yeah, I'm telling you don't worry about jobs. Worry about what you have to learn. That's more important. Let's not jump the gun. You must move from remember to create. It's a process. Focus on that process. The result will be a job. Here you see a summary. Placement percentage 95 plus percent consistently. And the highest salary, which is the first row highlighted in brown, is going up. I believe the 2020 numbers, it's a lot higher. I think it's 43 lakhs per annum. So how many companies are paying more than five lakhs? somewhere between five and 10 lakhs. And what's the average salary? Look at the companies that come. Amrita is not worried about jobs. Let me go to one slide, please. Uh, hang on. Are you able to see the screen yet? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, I think I missed it. Oh, sorry. Is it on full screen mode? Now it's on full screen, sir. OK, thank you. Yeah, so it's not about placement. I think we are only worried about getting fantastic placement. So focus on what you have to do. The reputation part is there. There is a quality. There is a process when you enter to when you have to exit. Focus on the process and do what you have to do. Invest the time in learning. Fantastic jobs will land on you. Now all this is achieved. And is dual because of the quality of our faculty. Just giving you some very, very few examples because I can't fill the slides with just a whole bunch of photos and letters. Key thing is you see that 73 awards and recognition. And these are people who have been recognized at the bottom. You see Dr. Balamurugan, the person standing next to Dr. Balamurugan, who's the tallest guy, is the MHRD minister. He was the MHRD minister. This is at a national level, and that's what I'm talking about quality. And the person on the left hand side, you see Intel. Intel is the largest chip manufacturer. Intel, Amazon, Cisco, they're all tied up with Amrita because our faculty interact with them quite a lot. And on the right side, you see that this individual, Pro Professor Prashant Nair, he's been selected as a mentor of change by Atal Tinkering Lab. 
mentor of change, mentor, change, keywords. So this is how I can be very proud of my faculty here at Amrita. And here you see the ladies. Ladies in artificial intelligence, that is Dr. Soumya. She's an ambassador for NVIDIA. NVIDIA is another large US company that makes graphics, graphic processors. You see Dr. Tirumalni, Guru Award in SAE India. SAE India is a huge automotive consortia association and she's a Guru Award. And you see Jansi Chemistry. She's been selected by UNICEF as a consultant for National Nutrition Mission. So these are not some local awards. These are very high level, very competitive awards that our faculty have achieved and there are 73 of them like that just very high level awards and that is the quality we're talking about now what is important is of course students come they can go through their degree program i always love this word human being versus being human i don't know being human is more important and that's what we talk about values universal values and holistic education our chancellor is very clear education for life should be the prime goal for this university. We go through a lot of extracurricular activities that are one going to be healthy both mentally and physically. And Amma herself is available to every student. So accountability and access Access to Amma brings accountability in me. A student who is not happy with me doesn't have to worry, can go straight to Amma. She is the chancellor and she will pay attention to every student of this university. That's the greatest part. Um, I don't know how many other places you can meet the chancellor as a student. I don't know. I've never been to other universities to go do try that. But here chancellor is available. Greatest of anything that we can project. And besides just going through our curriculum, you know, we have to have a holistic education. We talk about Swachata, Swachha Bharat. I think Amrita started and I believe Dr. Mahadevan might be able to talk a bit more because he's been involved in a lot of these activities where students take the initiative. When you go help a villager, the satisfaction you get is extremely important. That satisfaction brings you confidence. Confidence leads to success. We don't shy away from cleaning anything. Cleanliness and hygiene, very important to every one of us. And our students have taken this initiative. This was started 12, 15 years ago. And now we call it Swachata, Swach Bharat. But this is something that we do. And the university promotes that. Besides cleaning up, you look at the bottom, care to care. That's again helping whomever we can. Part of holistic education. Conserving water. You know, when, when there is enough rain, we don't care about water, but then the couple of years it doesn't rain, we run around trying to say, you now need to save water. No, saving water should be just part of our life. It doesn't matter when it's available in plenty or if it's not available. That habit will never put us in a situation where we run short of water and we are in extreme drought. Organic farming, again, health consciousness. So these are activities that we don't enforce on students, they take it. This is Amrita's learning to integrate values and excellence. A unique, unique feature that you will never find anywhere else. Now, when the students are confident and they get the encouragement from the mentors, it's very easy for them to go out and shine. Now, I just want you to focus on the right hand side on the top. It says Narendra Modi. This was something that was um, that happened in Singapore, I think in 2020, early part of, oh no, 2019, late 2019. Wherever we had hackathons, we had to showcase in national and international levels. Our students have excelled. 360 plus awards in the last five years. And beautiful. I love it because I want our kids, our students to excel and be confident. Here is a solar auto rickshaw. Another campus, this was, I think, in Amritapuri. You know, the students decided that we will not burn gasoline. We will not burn diesel. We will use the sunlight to shuttle between buildings in our campus. So they took one auto rickshaw, completely revamped it, made it Amrita Surya Vahini. Great effort. Again, 
proud kids. So having said all that, I thought I will give you a very there's a nine minute video. I'm really sorry if I have overstepped on everybody else, but I hope that at the end of the day we'll all be able to look at what is Amrita, why is Amrita where we are, and where is Amrita reached, and what what should be the right choices. I'll just play this video so you get a. Can you hear? Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam. Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam, Coimbatore campus has 6,000 plus students pursuing higher education in diverse disciplines like engineering, management, arts and sciences, mass communication, and social work. The campus has three spacious academic blocks, which houses academic departments, research centers, administrative offices, seminar halls, smart classrooms, and state-of-the-art laboratories. Academic block houses offices of university-level administrators, faculty rooms of 12 teaching departments, teaching laboratories, research laboratories, centers of excellence, 144 ICT-enabled classrooms, nine seminar halls with capacity ranging from 250 to 60 and conference halls. Amrita is a residential campus with more than 80% of the students residing in the hostel. A good number of faculty also resides in the campus. There are seven boys hostels with a capacity to accommodate 3,400 students and two girls hostels with a capacity of 1,600 students. Each shared room in the hostel is equipped with furniture for comfortable study and stay for four students. Besides these, there are two bedded and single bedrooms for senior students and research scholars. The number of washrooms is in the ratio one is to four. Washrooms are cleaned twice a day by dedicated housekeeping staff. Ramps and differently abled washrooms are available in all the hostels. The campus has well-furnished, ventilated, clean and spacious mess halls attached to each hostel serving hygienic and nutritious food. Each mess hall is equipped with dishwashers and has a capacity for 400 to 800 students to dine at a time. The Central Library building is well-equipped with print and electronic resources with LAN and Wi-Fi connectivity for accessing the e-resources. Working hours is between 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Library also has a digital library with Ethernet, UPS connectivity, and a seating capacity of 170. Sports facilities include three sports grounds, tennis courts, basketball courts, gymnasium, and Olympic standard swimming pool. The main athletics ground is spread over six acres. It has two football grounds and a cricket pitch. Shuttle badminton courts and basketball courts are located near hostels. Three gymnasia, two near boys hostels and one in the girls hostel are available for the benefit of the residential students. The swimming pool is equipped with a water filtering unit and is a host to several state and national level competitions. The campus has three auditoria with a seating capacity of 3000. Air conditioned auditoria with seating capacities 500 and 300 are also available. Six seminar halls with capacity ranging from 50 to 200 are available for organizing international conferences, seminars, and student events. University has a fully air conditioned guest house with 24 deluxe rooms and four suites to cater the needs of foreign university professors and other dignitaries. A non-AC guest house with another 20 rooms caters to the need of parents and other guests visiting the campus. This has a fully furnished dining hall and also facility for holding buffet dinner during major university events like convocation. Three multi-cuisine canteens cater to the students in the campus. Canteens are spacious and work between 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
The main canteen has the capacity to serve 500 students at a time. Besides this, there are night canteens attached to hostels which work between 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. The campus has a bank branch with two installed ATMs and a post office. Medical aid facility is available 24-7 with qualified doctors to take care of emergency medical aid for the campus residents and students. Staff accommodation is provided with various types of apartments varying from three bedroom to single bedroom apartments. Over 200 apartments are available for faculty and staff. Amrita attaches a lot of importance to sustainable development and preservation of ecosystem. The Amrita Koimboto campus is endowed with a serene ambience. Preserving nature and swachta is engraved in every individual living in the campus. Tree plantation is an integral part of the life of a student here. 1.75 lakh trees have been planted in the campus with green cover of the campus over 7.2 lakh square meters. Only 5% of the total 360 acres of the land have buildings and roofs. There are several species of trees including medicinal garden. Several butterflies and variety of species of birds and reptiles are found in the campus adding to its rich biodiversity. Water conservation efforts have decreased the consumption of water in the campus from 8.25 lakh liters per day in 2016 to 7 lakh liters per day in 2020. This is a considerable reduction of almost 1 lakh liters per day amounting to around 3.5 crores liters in a year. Rainwater pits with a capacity of 20 lakh liters are available. The total amount of rainwater collected so far in the last two years is around 4 crore liters. This is a considerable achievement considering the fact that the average rainfall in this area is only 65 cm. Water from rooftop of academic blocks, hostel buildings and residences is collected. They are treated using sand filters and are reused. Liquid waste management has been given top priority as the campus falls in a rain shadow region with average rainfall of 60 to 70 cm in a year. Four sewage treatment plants are set up to treat water with a total capacity of 10 lakh liters. In addition to aeration, effective microorganisms, UV filtering and sand filtering is used in the treatment. This treated water is used for irrigating the campus. Reduce, reuse, and recycle is a culture followed in this campus. Segregation at the origin of the waste is followed with separate bins for plastic, paper, food waste, and napkins at 600 plus locations in the 360 acre campus. The segregated waste is processed at a center. A separate cell is functioning to recycle e waste. Prefurbished e waste is used in many places and the items that cannot be recycled are disposed using authorized agents. All high voltage light sources are converted with CFL and LED low power bulbs. Solar power of around 216 kilowatts is installed in the rooftop of academic blocks. These green initiatives have enabled us to win the following accolades. For two consecutive years, the campus is ranked as the greenest and cleanest campus in India in the Swatch Campus Rankings of the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India. Amrita is the only Indian university featured in the Sustainability Literacy Test of United Nations Global Compact Prime Initiative. The university is enlisted as a pioneer in water conservation initiatives in the country and awarded with Green Institutional Mentor Award. Water Management by Mahatma Gandhi National Council of Rural Education. Student involvement in outreach includes three credit elective course, Live in Lab, experiential learning program wherein students work on real-time problems in neighboring villages. Variety of student clubs involved in the community engagement such as Alive, Nature Club, Organic Farming, Amala Bharat and Clean India, Amrita Quench Water Conservation Team, Skill Development and Empowerment of Tribal Communities.
Okay. Am I back? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you are back. I'm in full screen mode. Yeah. Thank you. So that is the way we live. I'm I'm very proud. It is not just this campus. All our campuses have the same kind of greenery because we as Amritians truly believe in living in harmony with nature. A very important aspect. And I, I have to state this. What you saw in video, it is not just a video shoot. I'm so proud of my students, my colleagues in this campus, and especially Dr. Mahadevan. He's been a, a great example, a pillar of how things should be done. He's been here with us for 20 plus years. And what you see as trees here, they were just barren brown land. And today it looks like this. It is because the initiative started 20 years ago and not yesterday. So that's the way of life and that's our culture. So having said that, now you have to choose a university. It's of reputation and good quality. Here I've just uh, given you some highlights of where we are as Amrita. We are fourth best university in India. This is ranked by NIRF, National Institutional Ranking Framework. When this was in, initiated in the year 2015, we were ranked 10th. In the subsequent year, we were ranked 9. And then the couple of years before this, we were ranked 8th. And in 2020, we were ranked fourth. That's the government officially released ranking numbers for universities. Now, if you look at other global ranking, this is where we stand. There is an agency called QS World University Ranking. We are in the 800 to 1000 in the world ranking throughout the world. And then we are at 168 in the BRICS nations. That's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. These are the five countries under BRICS, and we are ranked 168. So this is how you can look at it, the reputation and our global recognition by academicians around the world. Now I can claim everything and I can say what I want to, but I, I should also get a feedback from our students who have left the campus, been through four years, and they're all doing fantastically well in their career. Their opinion also matters. So we've done a survey with a lot of our students and this is done every year. I'll just share some. This is a list of questionnaire and I think this is based on our accreditation agencies and regulatory bodies. 13 questions and here you see our response from alumni. Everybody is close to the excellent bar, uh, some exceeding excellent. So 2016 graduates on the left hand side, 2017 graduates on the right hand side. And these are significant respondents. When we ask for something, our alumni step up and definitely and truly help us and, and make sure that we get what we need. In the sense, if we send a questionnaire, they don't say, oh, I don't have time. They take the time to respond and they respond honestly. And this is 2018 graduates um, on the left hand side. Then you also see 2013, 14, 15 graduates. So this is a summary of data collected from alumni from all four campuses. So this is an average of what we have received. And of course, wherever we need to improve, we make a note and we make sure that this is addressed at the board of management or academic council and address wherever we see there should be absolute need for making some changes. Now, I may ask students have come and gone, but parents, yeah, they are the best. And they will tell you exactly, you know, if their kid is doing well and they like Amrita. This is again 11 questionnaires sent to parents and we had about 1024 respondents and this was collected in 2018 and 19. If you look at key things, I mean, one of the thing I talked about was reputation of the institution and the placement opportunities. You look at number 10 and you go across, you see the placement opportunities. Everybody is happy because placement is not an issue. It's about getting fantastic placement, quality of education, reputation, infrastructure facilities. So parents have said, this is a great place to send my son or daughter to. And that's a summary of this. Going back, this is what we believe in and this is what we breathe. Holistic education, directly driven by Chancellor. Now, 
going back to my first slide, choosing a good engineering college, is it really complicated? Maybe not. It's not that complicated. Choosing the right program. If you only look at what has happened in the past and what you hear today, maybe it will be complicated, but trust me, it is not so confusing. Every one of the students that has walked through Amrita has ended up with something great. We're trying to make it better and greater. And I thank you for your patience and I apologize to all my colleagues for using up um, more time than what was allotted to me. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, sir, that's okay. And uh, it has been a very great and a uh, lot of information has come to you, to all the students who are, in fact, uh, waiting eagerly to understand why, when, where, and how in Amrita is all about. So thank you so much for a lovely briefing. There is, I will take one or two questions. And the first question is about the insight insight on the future scope of computer and communication engineering. Uh, is it a good field to do b in? So I would take that question and uh, sir would appreciate your uh, feedback on that particular question. Yeah, I is mean communication, the, computer and communication engineering, is it worth uh, taking is the question. Yes, absolutely. Like I said, those are very relevant and emerging. You electronics and communication alone cannot be the way forward. Most of our electronics and communication folks, if you look at our curriculum, we have inserted a lot of the computer programming and computer engineering courses. Computer and communication engineering is kind of moving that front even further. So anything that has this sort of interdisciplinary approach is what is needed moving forward to be successful. Now the program and pedagogy are there. The investment from the student is also needed, which is the effort. Short answer, yes, absolutely. Uh, we wouldn't, uh, I just wanted to mention one thing at Amrita, yes. we just don't randomly introduce programs because uh, it's got a fancy name. Every program that we introduce must have a purpose and a future. So you can trust that. All right. Sir, I, uh, I have some questions which has come up through my mobile. And uh, the first question is regarding the uh, recent uh, new education policy 2020. Uh, I, I mean, I'm going to understand through the students that uh, uh, from uh, the 2020 MEP, uh, all those arts and colleges would now be having four years of degree. And they are willing to accept exit or entry at whatever time they want and uh, to complete one year is a certificate, two years a diploma, three years uh, it is again a degree and fourth year it is something to do with research. And this is for the arts and science. They take BSc chemistry or BCom or BA English literature. This would be what it would be uh, maybe in the next three, four years. The question to you, sir, is will there be any change uh, from your understanding of NEP 2020 for uh, BTEC programs, which is currently at uh, four years of uh, graduation. Will there be a change? And if so, there is a change. What would be the change, sir? Now, there won't be any immediate change to the BTEC program. Um, what yes, I have seen and we will adopt and we have already introduced it is before um, MHRD and AICT would not permit a lot of online classes. So there are courses available just outside. I mean, in Swayam, NPTEL, Coursera, there are so many beautiful courses which are just one course. Before there were restrictions on how many courses a student can take offline and transfer the credits. Now we have at Amrita, I mean, this is before even NEP came in. We have decided that there are plenty of nice courses available. Our students should benefit. So we have allowed credit transfer from online courses. So that we will continue. Now, whether they drop out, come back in, they can take a break. Even today, we allow break of study. I mean, education should be fun, not some confinement and some time frame. So we have allowed break in study, they come back. Um, that's been there with Amrita even before NEP 2020. So the four year duration will not change. How we complete the credits required to get a degree, 
already there. Students can take online. Students are now allowed to kind of take a break and come back in. If you just take it as a nutshell. So thank you so much, sir, on briefing us about whether there's going to be a change on the BTEC front of four years. And this is my question to you, sir, that the national education policy 2020, we find that uh, there are quite a few uh, international university which would set up in India. And uh, today, most of the students uh, wish to go abroad uh, to do their MS through writing the GRE or TOEFL, uh, you know, those examinations qualify and go abroad. Uh, when the foreign universities come out to India, how is that Amrita University uh, who is going to do this research and continue this research and post graduation uh, would improve upon the standards so that there is no brain drain. There's no that students need not go all the way abroad to conduct continue with their higher studies. Is, is, is Amrita doing something really <coughs> special so that students can continue to do their post-graduation research with uh, Amrita Vishwavidyapitam? So this is what my question is, sir. Sorry, uh, if the foreign universities come to India, would Amrita students continue to do research with Amrita? Is that the question? Uh, with Indian universities, especially with Amrita, sir. That's right. Yeah. So I have a very simple philosophy and all this. Um, I think universities looking at each other as competitors is first of all a very wrong notion. Any place that can provide a student with ample access and beautiful infrastructure for research or learning should be encouraged. This partnership that I talked about 200 plus, it wasn't because we just wanted to sign something. Those are active. And we want our students to benefit from those. Whether they do research at Amrita or at our partner university, it really doesn't matter to me personally or our management as long as the student benefits. The student centric and student uh, focus is more important. In that sense, I don't see anything significantly changing. However, our relationship with other universities will get stronger because of the proximity. Are you, so, are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm able to hear you, sir. Yeah. So th thank you so much, sir, uh, uh, yeah. for briefing us on all those queries. For one of time, I'm not able to take on more questions, but uh, in a nice thing that's for almost an hour and a half, so which has really benefited the students community who are now geared up to joining Amada School of Engineering across all the four campuses. Thank you once again, sir, for being with us and spending your valuable time with us. I'll take on to our next speaker, Dr. Mahadevan S, who is the Deputy Dean at our School of Engineering Coimbatore. To just profile about uh, Dr. Mahadevan, uh, he's the MSc in Physics from uh, MG University, Kerala, QSAT, the Kuchin University of Science and Technology, and has done his PhD from Amrita University. He has done his PhD from Amrita University and has uh, 25 years of teaching and research experience. Is currently serving as the Deputy Dean of School of, School of Engineering and uh, Chairman of Department of Science, Coimbatore. The areas of research includes, includes the theoretical nuclear physics, and he's also held uh, several positions in the university, like Chairman Council of Arts, Arts, uh, Arts and Science Committee. Member Faculty of Science, Vice, Cha Vice Chairman and Admissions, Member of Academic Council and Board of Studies of Physics in several universities. He has also attended several national conferences and international conferences and presented papers in the field of theoretical nuclear physics. So thank you, Dr. Mahadevan, for being with us. And uh, uh, you are going to be, you are certainly going to take our students through the facilities that have that we have across all the four campuses, which will be of great help to our students to understand how does our campuses across all, all the four campuses differ from other campuses uh, of other universities. So Dr. Mah Ahmed Mahadevan, if you're with me, uh, good afternoon yeah. and uh, welcome you to, uh, it's too early to say good afternoon, but again, close to good news. I uh, welcome you to this, uh, this Shah. The Shah is, you're going to direct the uh, spoil in the world of uh, opting to join in the world of getting into our campuses who would like to know more and more about our campuses. So I would like to start off with the first uh, question, which generally happens through 
or the student community who are, or the parents, of course, who would like to know uh, about uh, the infrastructure of uh, all the four campuses uh, in terms of uh, how many classrooms, how many other classrooms, what are the what are the laboratories that we have, uh, what are the uh, what of course regarding the library, uh, Dean Sir has just uh, mentioned about it, but then the number of seminar halls, and uh, you know you have uh, to do all those practicals and these and that those. Uh, pilot laboratories which would differ from other laboratories across the university. So the, my first question, could you please brief us on all these infrastructures across all the campuses, sir? Over to you, sir, once again, Thank on behalf you. of the Vishu Vidya Peda, School of Engineering, uh, we, the viewers, as well as uh, the other colleagues of mine, welcome you for this disha, the direction. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Am I audible, sir? Thank you. Yes, sir. You're very much audible, sir. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, so uh, good afternoon, all the participants. Uh, very warm welcome to the Amrita uh, Vishwavidya uh, um, The video that uh, uh, Dr. Shashangan has played uh, towards the end of his uh, uh, lecture has uh, shown uh, many facilities that we have in uh, Coimbatore campus. And uh, Coimbatore campus is the oldest uh, campus that uh, Amrita has. Uh, the, re the most recent campus is Chennai. And if you look at the, uh, the infrastructure wise, like whether it is the hostel or the classrooms or the seminar halls, I would say that they are the best suited for, um, for an education purpose, uh, may not be for an entertainment purpose, uh, because as, as uh, Dean Sir has rightly said, uh, the, the time that you spend uh, uh, is uh, uh, not wasted. In, in fact, it is an investment. Uh, so for that, I can assure you that even the uh, the the latest campus that you have in Chennai has an excellent uh, classrooms. Uh, in fact, uh, I would say that uh, the the new campus that's been added, we have learned lessons from our old uh, campuses and we have improved. In fact, uh, the the facilities there, and I can assure you that we have sufficient number of uh, uh, classrooms, uh, laboratories. Uh, some of them are uh, research laboratories because we do a lot of research. Uh, research uh, which is focused to societal uh, benefits. Uh, so I would say that you will be getting uh, one of the best uh, facilities in terms of uh, doing a serious uh, study uh, that is assured in all the campuses in Amrita. So that's okay, sir. No issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, regarding yes, the facilities that you have in terms of laboratories, the campus, uh, all, all the four campuses. The next important question, which most of the parents are the facilities in the, the hostel in terms of the, the, the messes, the type of food, uh, the type of security, the type of safety. And these are the questions which uh, most of the parents do keep asking us during their admission process. So if you could have explain to us what are the special specialities in terms of the hostel where in which the children are going to spend uh, four years of their life with us. So over to you, uh, sir, for you to explain um, the facilities. Of yeah, uh, thank you, S sir. I think um, uh, you have seen uh, the hostels and the other uh, facilities in Coimbatore campus in the video. Um, uh, as I told you, um, whenever Amrita built a new campus, uh, we wanted actually, uh, 80, in fact, in Coimbatore, we have 80% of the students are staying in the hostels. So most of the Amrita campus will focus on more students staying in the hostel because uh, that's how uh, they will be able to spend more time on their education. Uh, so if you look at the facilities, I would say facilities are uh, uh, moderate to high because you may not see a very um, uh, flashy uh, type of hostels in Amrita, but uh, for uh, safety issue, comfort, uh, uh, health wise, uh, our food, our environment here, uh, the value system that we, because ultimately, you know, when a student wants to grow, uh, he has to be put in not a very, very uh, comfortable, cosy atmosphere may not, uh, may not encourage a student to grow. Uh, so in Amrita, you see a challenging atmosphere is given, whether it is in the uh, whether it is in the study or in the academics or in other aspects. Uh, the, or the, and everything that is good in the student is being uh, taken out, it is encouraged. So for that purpose, I think safety, safety is one of the most important thing because in Amrita, all the wardens or the hostel administrators, they all work like a family. 
Uh, so whether it is a medical emergency or uh, whether it is a student uh, uh, having a uh, problem adjusting with the new environment, we have sufficient number of hostel wardens who will be 24 hours staying in the in the hostels. Uh, they will look after the students um, uh, in a very compassionate way because the philosophy itself for chancellor is to work like a family. So in that way, I think Amrita, whether any campus has very dedicated um, uh, people uh, who will 24 hours will look after the welfare of the students. And so that way, I think parents uh, need not have any apprehension about the facilities that we have in the hostel and the food uh, is a very, very difficult uh, thing to satisfy uh, all because people are coming from different uh, parts of this uh, nation and you know the food habits are uh, varied. But one thing that we can assure you is that nutritious food, safe food and uh, the food which is uh, required uh, to keep a good health and conducive for, uh, for, uh, for studies. I think that is assured in all the hostels that we have at Amrita. So thank you so much, sir, for a yeah. brief explanation about the facilities of Air Hostel, the mess, the type of uh, rooms that we have. Uh, the next question comes, you know, like uh, stay fit is the uh, uh, talk of the town today. How does our children uh, stay fit through some sports activities, some uh, games, and what other facilities do you have in all the four campuses so that the children are, are able to spend the time in the morning or in the evening? as per the games and sports are concerned. And what are the activities that you do? There is, is there any competition, sports competition? Is there any games being played among the students or students from outside? Or what type of facilities do you have so that they stay fit in terms of their physical standards? Over to you, sir. Yeah, um, in uh, Coimbatore campus, no, uh, it's a 360 acre campus with uh, almost we have got four to five very spacious playgrounds and international standard Olympic standard swimming pool. And the ambience in Coimbatore is such that I think uh, a morning walk, refreshing walk, it starts, the day can start with a refreshing walk. Even in Amritupuri, you know, it's in a seashore. You can have a very refreshing trawl in uh, outside the campus uh, or in even in the ashram side. Or if you go to Bangalore, uh, there also we have got uh, wonderful campus uh, which uh, suits for a refreshing morning walk. Uh, and we have uh, uh, all games, uh, uh, whether it is shuttle or basketball or uh, tennis or swimming or all facilities are given. We have a separate um, physical education department uh, which encourages uh, competitions among the students uh, in campus, intra-campus. And also the students are encouraged to participate in sports activities outside national events. Uh, so all encouragements are given to the students. Uh, the only only thing is that we have to sometimes uh, uh, make the students come out and uh, uh, because the one of the reasons probably is the overuse of the electronic gadgets is making them lazy. Uh, but we do have uh, we do have counselors. We conduct uh, uh, lectures for them to make them come out of the uh, thing and use the facilities. In fact, I would say facilities are plenty. The only thing is that students have to make use of the facilities so that they stay healthy. But facilities wise, I think any campus will definitely have all the uh, needed uh, equipments and uh, ambience for uh, good health and uh, uh, stay fit. Uh, uh, so That's thank you so much, yeah. uh, sir, <laughs> yeah. for uh, telling us that uh, all equipments are there for our children to make use of. And as rightly said by our uh, deputy dean, that it's up to up to us to make use of those equipments. And there is where the problem comes in. So our children, please listen to him that whatever is the facility that we have, please make use of it so that you stay fit and energetic. So the next question, having said about the sports facilities, uh, stay fit. What are the recreational uh, uh, things that you do in uh, all the campuses. Is there any recreational activities or is that people can spend together, the children can spend together, students can spend together some time in recreating themselves uh, through some various activities? And if so, what are those activities in recreations? Over to you, sir. In fact, there are around 28 clubs that we have in uh, uh, the Coimbatore campus and the uh, same way we have uh, in the other campuses too, Bangalore and Amritapuri. Uh, the club is uh, ranging from uh, music club, dance club. We have a Srishti club which takes about the literary and art uh, thing. We have a vision club that talks about the, uh, <clears throat> the um, eye donation, uh, 
uh, we have we have clubs which uh, which helps people to go out societal um, helping the society those type of clubs are there there are clubs which uh, which is a computer uh, programming sort of thing clubs which encourage debates quizzes um, you have got uh, the uh, uh, the club which encourages public speaking uh, i think uh, there are variety of clubs and most of these are run by students themselves the faculty only will be just uh, be uh, guiding them the entire uh, the student clubs are uh, done by the students and we have tech events uh, we have uh, tech events that has in um, that we have it in coimbatore is called the anokha Uh, which used to attract uh, many students from outside uh, amrita and many of our students have won laurels in the uh, uh, association of indian university competition that's held uh, southern uh, wise zone wise even the national level many of our students have won prizes we have department of students welfare who takes care of this but they will be only guiding the entire show is run by the students themselves very active clubs we have uh, in fact um, some of our students have also um, uh, become they have taken uh, their career in uh, music i think one of our alumni is ramu i think he is an internationally known musician now he was a student of amrita in coimbatore uh, he has now become a professional uh, uh, music uh, uh, he has got a in his own company so i think there is enough here for students to uh spend their time creatively and i would request if any one of you have this uh, any talent which is god gifted uh, i think you should uh, not leave them uh, in fact it should be a pressure release for you uh, when you do this um, engineering course we we are there to help you in all those uh, avenues yeah your uh, yeah that you are you are muted sir Just muted automatically. Yeah, yeah. Sorry yeah, for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe <laughs> microphone didn't like me talking to you, but then uh, <laughs> on the lighter side, uh, sir, well said about the facilities that we have as far as the recreational uh, fact is concerned. And uh, you know, I always believe that uh, if you get more degrees, you become literate. But then you become educated when you have uh, certain values, culture, ethos being planted. Right, right. And uh, right. and what type of uh, value-based education uh, you give it? in all the four campuses uh, for the children so that they become holistically stronger when they grow up uh, when they grow up uh, as engineers and, and uh, be a true citizens to our country so over to you on that particular question of a uh, value based education yeah this is a very 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 important question i think part of it was already answered by dr shashank uh, yeah but uh, but uh, i would say in amrita Uh, we have fortunately starting from our vice chancellor our pro chancellor our vice chancellor and chancellor we have deans of engineering we have very very dedicated examples who have proven in their life uh, and they are all uh, value based um, so we don't actually teach we live by examples so That's fortunately true. we have yeah we have been uh, very fortunate to have excellent individuals um in that in that point i think amrita stands unique uh, whether if you compare with um, uh, i am not um, i i do not want to have a uh, sort of uh, discussion here but if you i can with confidence say uh, any of the higher education institution if you compare uh, the quality or uh, the integrity of the faculty here uh, living by examples that you will find in an amrita which is very very unique so in fact um, uh, in every action that the faculty does here uh, students get motivated students can see them as examples uh, whether it is in discipline whether it is in time uh, keeping whether it is in excellence whether it is a rigor or whether you have the humility uh, uh, these are all the whether, whether it is integrity whether it is uh, uh, truthfulness um anything anything that you call as a value you can see it as examples individuals i can show them so individual and tell here is here is a person who is an example who is a role model for you and students look upon them and then that is how we teach a value uh, not uh, as uh, discussions or as uh, uh, some sort of sermons we don't believe in that uh that is unique because it's it's all engraved in uh, everyone's personality here thanks to the uh, pro chancellors and uh, chancellors vision in this thank you so much uh, my final yeah. question to you sir is about the green initiative that we have introduced in amada vishwavidyapeetham and uh, what how how could our children contribute to 
contribute towards this green uh, initiative? Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, in fact, the whatever uh, green that you have seen in all the campuses here is because of the vision of our chancellor and pro chancellor. I would like to mention the name of our pro chancellor, uh, Swami Abhay Amrudananda Puri, uh, who was the uh, pillar in uh, making this campus green. Uh, in fact, when we uh, acquired this land, I think we didn't have much of green here. Uh, in fact, every student of Amrita, uh, in, in Coimbatore or Amritapuri, uh, we uh, make them uh, plant a tree here. Uh, so I think we have around 1 lakh plus trees planted in this campus by uh, by students. And in fact, this is again, uh, it's not done uh, for, for because of any uh, any compulsion or any any drive or anything like that. It's natural, like natural because um, uh, Amma says, our chancellor says that coexistence with nature uh, this is our Veda also says, our Indian Sanadhana Dharma also talks about this. And now world has started talking like a fashion, but it is a, it is life for us, uh, coexistence with nature. So that's what uh, we teach and that is why, and anybody who, who is coexisting with nature cannot uh, live without greenery. And that's the reason I think we have lots of green here. It's, it's our nature, basic nature, because we wanted to live in coexistence with nature. So it's natural for us to be green. Sir, thank you so, so, so very much, uh, uh, Deputy you, sir. sir, for being thank with you. us and uh, talking to us about the facilities that we have in all the four campuses. And I'm sure that uh, students who have had such uh, doubts in their mind have now been cleared with your talk. So thank you once again, sir, for being with thank us. You. And we have the final last speaker thank here, Subha Mohan, uh, madam, who will be who is the academic coordinator for uh, Coimbatore Amadha Vishwavidya Pidam and uh, may I on behalf of Amadha Vishwavidya Pidam welcome you ma'am for this particular disha. May I have you on ma'am? Namashwaya thank you Namashwaya, for Namashwaya you are there so welcome, welcome yeah, ma'am welcome ma'am. Very welcome much. To welcome, welcome to you and ma'am well, you are going to talk about those credit systems uh, for those BTEC uh, students yeah. you can also you can talk to them about the student exchange program that we have, integrated program that we have, dual degree programs that we have, Arizona pathway program that we have, international internships. You have, can also talk about the short term programs. Uh, you can also touch upon the living labs uh, and uh, as well as uh, regarding the international scholarship and uh, the international faculty that we have, ma'am. So over to you, ma'am, and thank you once again for being with us, uh, waiting for your turn to come. It's almost. Uh, one hour, not one hour, one hour, it's almost going to be two hours, but I'm sure that you can take your own time and then uh, brief all our students who are very eagerly to know about those things, those topics which I just mentioned to you now, ma'am. So thank you on behalf of Amr Amrita Vishwavidya Pridam. Over to you, ma'am, and let's hear from you. And I'm sure you will have some uh, uh, PPTs to be shown. Over to you. Welcome again. Thank you so much. Namashwaya. Uh, welcome to all of you who are there in this uh, live uh, program. Uh, it's been, I think, almost uh, an hour and a half that you've been glued to the uh, the system. And, you know, uh, the way of life for the past six months has been like this for all of us. So I think, uh, well, I'm not going to take much time, uh, um, as uh, you have pointed out, Mr. Krishnan. I'm just going to take you through a small presentation wherein I'm going to explain to you. Uh, you would have heard uh, Dr. Sashangan saying lots of things about the uh, academic uh, structure and all uh, in real how it's going to be. I'm going to take you through that and uh, would also cover the international programs part uh, like how, how are our collaborations and what are, uh, after your BTEC, where all can you go and how Amrita helps you with the option. So I hope I'm audible, Mr. Krishnan. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're audible. Absolutely no issue. Okay. You can go ahead, ma'am. If there is an issue, okay. I will uh, pause and then uh, get it corrected and move forward. Over to you, ma'am. Absolutely clear. I'm just going to share the presentation. Um, uh, it's just so I have to tell me if it's fine, all of you are able to see. Yeah. Academic experience and international options. Yes. Yeah, that slide is on to the screen, and uh, uh, if you could All right. uh, have yes, uh, this is my first slide. Like okay, okay I, I was telling you about what what this session is going to cover. 
uh, I'm going to have the experience in the academics, like how it is before we could. So my first uh, uh, question or, you know, the thought coming in a student uh, when he's moving from taking the transition from school to an university is what are the changes? Uh, you are coming from a different environment totally. Uh, uh, the learning environment, especially I'm speaking, and uh, you will be having lots of terminologies. You will come across terminologies. Your uh, class schedules will be entirely different, unlike school where you will have breaks and, you know, here you will have sessions or you may have be having two uh, breaks together and all. So I'm just going to give you a difference as to what is the difference between a school and university as far as the academic structure is concerned. This is how it's going to be. Uh, in school, you had your academic year was 12 months, split into your quarterly, half early and your annuals. You had classroom sessions precisely or predominantly. You had written exams, um, you had marks and all that what you had to do uh, till uh, from all 12 years is understand what's going on in the class and remember what is being taught. So what is the difference you're going to have in the university system would be uh, your academic year is going to be replaced with a term called semester, which is approximately 90 days in a given year, uh, which is classified as odd or even semester. Six, six months approximately is what a semester is termed. Then instead of when you say classroom sessions in your school, the same thing happens here, but we have terminologies called lecture, tutorial and practical, which you would be um, if you have seen the syllabus or curriculum listed out on the website, you will have this uh, acronym LTP, which is that lecture, tutorial and practical. A lecture is a classroom session. Tutorial is again a classroom session. The lecture is the same thing. What a faculty teaches and you listen sitting in the class. A tutorial may be more participation or it may be discussion classes or you know assignments or something happening. And then you have practicals or lab lab sessions. And you had something called uh, written exams in school where it was a pen and paper exams where they ha how you were assessed. Here you will have in addition to. Uh, your, your slides are not changing. It's still stuck on the first slide. Still, it's, it's still the same. It's in the second part. I'm, I'm talking oh, about. You're not, you, okay. you're not changing. The, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not, I'm I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. sorry sir. So if you see here in the schools, you have marks. Uh, you have uh, written exams where I left in. In the university, you will still have written exams, but you will, in addition to it, you will have been, you will be assessed with assignments and presentations. You'll have to present something what you have learned, and you'll be assessed even based on that. In school, you had mark system. Here, you are going to be familiar with two. Uh, you're going to be introduced with two terminologies as credit, credit points, and grades. Way forward in your higher education, these are the this was how it will it will be for you. It will be credit points and grades. And what you have, you, what you, as I said, you know, in the school you had understand and remember. You have to understand what is being taught and remember. Here, Sashangan sir would have has already said about the apply and create. So you know, this last final thing is what you understand and you remember. You would be applying and you will analyze and you will create. So that's going to be the difference between school and university. Now the same thing I'm going to take how how is this concept of uh, the structure is there in the next four years of uh, curriculum, how it is being covered. So in the first year. You have. Courses which are predominantly foundation courses, which is basically whatever you have learned in school, you will be either remembering that or if you have not remembered or you will try to you know brush up the, or refine the skills and then you will be introduced to core courses or courses that that are subjective to your program of choice so that is how it is you will have a new learning environment totally when you join the first semester wherein you will refine the skills what you have learned in school and you will be introduced to new topics so that is what is remember or understand? I, I know that you have seen this more in sort of Dr. Sashangan's initial slides. So this is how it is. The courses that are part of the curriculum would be basically catering towards remembering and understanding. Then moving to the second year, you have 
core courses here you will have like if you have taken mechanical engineering you have courses related to that program wise core courses you will be having and you will be introduced to something called professional electives which are basically uh, you know uh, for you to have you had sashangan sir was always been saying about your career choices and the way forward after 24 to 30 how your uh, years to, to 2024 to 2030 how your focus is going to be so to have an understanding uh, like you know which area in mechanical itself you want to you know specialize or in which area in ece you want to specialize your professional electives will help and these electives are open across all the programs which are in the campus so you ha you have an option of taking any core professional core engineering professional electives you can take from that and then you have free electives free electives is let's say that uh, you want to learn something about um, journalism or you want to some learn something about food science and nutrition so we have options totally different from the core subject what you are studying which is offered as electives so that are those those choices are also also starts from year 2 that is exactly third semester you will have that option so this is how the third year is uh, done yeah your core courses is based on your programs and here the kind of studies you will be having it will be more independent work and more in depth written assignments um here till that the remember and understand phase in year 1 you are still having a classroom session and here slowly you will be introduced to the assignments and you know you will be working independently you will be uh, trying to apply what you have learned in the in your first year or from your 12th standard or all the through 13 years what you have studied and then uh, you have uh, this is the year 3 once you decide what you want to have or you know you are in a dilemma as to what you want to specialize your professional Sorry, electives will so that your you. slides are not moving ah uh, sir it's, it's i'm just i'm just saying this hello go ahead sorry yeah 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 so and here in the second year another thing which you will have uh, you will be ready is if you if at all you are having options for exploring international opportunities studies and all second year is the right time for you to start planning uh, at least understanding what you are supposed to be ready with uh, what kind of courses you cannot can go for your masters and what are the options available so uh, at amrita we will start populating or sending you uh, information about the opportunities what we are offering so this is the right time for you to start it so at the end of year 2 you will have the application or the apply process as far as your curriculum is concerned or your career choice is concerned you will start applying what you have learned going on to your third year it would be more of advanced courses and you will be introduced to many projects you will be uh, introduced to live in labs um, those things basically because here your analyze and create phase started it starts like if you see the courses which are listed out in the curriculum would be more of more of project based learning you will have projects uh, and this is year 3 is the place where you kick start your options for internships or placement initiation in initiations it starts in year 3 and again if you are looking in for higher studies so it would be shortlisting of universities for your masters programs like i said in year 2 you will think about what you want to do in year 3 after you do that you will start your research on which university you want to apply depending on the kind of courses you want to do all that happens in year 3 and you can start with the initial application processes required so year 3 is of analyze what you have done and start evaluating and try to refine your focus towards your career year 4 the courses if you see there are not much courses you will have only free few electives which are offered because predominantly this is going to be year full of projects uh, you will be doing your project work or you will be doing your internship or you would have been doing your pre placement training and sometimes uh, students would have opted for student exchange programs which are be covering very shortly so all this year 4 you will have very little uh, core courses or electives to be uh, to be done predominantly the whole curriculum will be covering all this so it will be your final year project basically that is the core thing which happens in year 4 and here 
you have learned, you have reached the higher level of that pyramid, what uh, Dr. Sashangan was saying, you are there ready for the higher level for creation. So this is how the academic structure is. And now, uh, you, as I told you initially, the difference between school and university, basically the marks, you will be uh, seeing two new terminologies called credits and grades. So the courses are measured in units called credits. And depending on the number of hours of credits are assigned for a course, you will be given a grade. In a given semester, you can register for maximum 28 credits. If you see your curriculum table in the syllabus, you will have that uh, number, you know, maximum. It will be within within 28. It will not be exactly 28. It may be 20, 21 or even sometimes 19. So you have a leverage of doing up to 28 credits, meaning let's say that you want to do additional courses within that limit. If you're able to do it, you can do 28 credits. Also, those are additional credits which you can get. Then if you have to submit or complete your BTEC program, you need to earn at least 150 to 160 credits, so depending upon program to program. If you see the curriculum, you will have maximum 160 or 162 also we have. So if within eight semesters, you will have to complete the required credit, which means you have successfully completed your BTEC. That's how it goes. So as I have mentioned here, the courses are measured in units called credits. This is how it is. Depending on the hour, the credits are given. This is a four hour like. For every hour, you have one credit here. So if it is going to be a tutorial, you will have one credit. If it's going to be a lab, you will have for three hours, you will have one credit. So this is the credit table uh, which we'll follow. So all this, if you see all these things will be there in your curriculum table. If you see the programs in which you're interested in in the syllabus. So that's about the credit based system. And now coming on to uh, the international collaborations or the international programs and what are the opportunities what Amrita has got for you? If you see, we are spread across the globe with lots of uh, with 200 plus MOUs in all these nations, predominantly in the US with 98, Europe with 88. We're starting with Australia. We are trying for more in the uh, in the UK and we have so we have about 200 plus MOEs which we have now spread across all these continents and a few universities across and all these are highly ranked universities with which we have MOEs. What is what a BTEC student can do through Amrita? What we offer you are student exchange programs, integrated programs. I'm covering only these two because predominantly for uh, BTEC students, we have student exchange change programs and integrated programs is what you can apply for. Apart from this, we'll have scholarship programs and internship programs which are communicated as and when there is there are uh, um, requests or you know requirements from these MOU universities. If they say that they're coming up with some scholarship, we advertise it. So you can apply for that also. That mostly is for the MTech level or a postgraduate level. BTEC level, we have predominantly student exchange programs and integrated programs. So if you see student exchange programs, basically is you can opt to do your complete eighth semester in the foreign university. Seven semesters in Amrita and eighth semester you can exchange in the foreign university or the host university. What we say, what do you mean by exchange? So let us say I was talking about a credit system there. So the credit, if you are supposed to have 16 credits earned for that particular 16 credits, you can go to a foreign university, earn the credit, and that would be mapped to the Amrita rate. Here, the interesting and you know exciting part is there will be no tuition fees. You will just have to take care of the uh, living expenses for that particular for your living uh, for your stay there in that particular university. And how do you apply to it? And how how you how you are being selected for this? is you need to have a CGPA, a good CGPA, um, about 7.0 and above is what normally we encourage students to apply. And uh, you can do your uh, either choose to do your elective uh, courses that are equivalent to your uh, core electives there or even have your final project being done in the host university. So the options are these two when it comes to a student exchange program. And when you start applying, you will have a communication coming to you. There will be a advertisement given. 
and we will call for applications and the timeline is year three. It would either start in your fifth semester or in your sixth semester. You have to apply and you will be if you're shortlisted, the progress will start. We will take you through the whole process until you reach the host university. So student exchange program means that and a few universities which I have just have the logos here, which with which we have student exchange MOUs. Then you have integrated programs uh, like you will get a dual degree, both BTEC from Amrita and MS from the host university. Yes, it is sir. Still on the first slide. It is still on the first slide. Is it OK? Uh, now the slide is integrated programs. No, no, we are not no. getting it on screen. Sorry for not. Okay. Uh, I think, I think it's, yeah, I think it's frozen. Yeah, I think it would have stuck somewhere. You'll have to redo it. Uh, it's still on the first slide, academic experience and international options. So you could do something. Otherwise, uh, I mean, I don't know. Okay. You may say that you did not see any of the uh, slides which were uh, displayed till no, now. No, no. It is still on the first slide, which you have put it at the beginning of our talk. See, that, that is what Dr. Shashangan sir was also pointing out. But anyway, I think uh, Many of the okay. things uh, Dr. Sashangan had shown. Yeah, yeah right. is, many things, many things Sashangan sir has shown. So probably I think uh, ah, okay. it's okay. Maybe yeah. my my screen got frozen. Is Stuck it now that's moving? Okay. That's okay. That's no. okay. That's okay. Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Yeah. No, not an issue, man. You can carry no on. No problem. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. So I'll take the slide, current slide, what I am at. Is it visible now? Hello. Ah, uh, now. Yeah. No, 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 no. It is still on the first slide. Academic experience and international options. Oh. Uh, I think you are. Uh, sometimes get free. Ah, uh, no. Uh, no, you can retry it. Yeah, I'm retrying. Please uh, excuse me, please. No, no. Take your time, man. Huh? Take your time. You can still do it, and you can start from that particular slide which you are in. Ah, now you get the student exchange program. Yeah, I just have to tell me if it's moving. Yeah, I'll I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. So you are now on student exchange program slide. Yeah. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Students can opt to their eighth semester. It goes on. It's it's coming okay now. All right, fine. Yeah, this is where I stopped uh, like the student exchange program, which is the uh, application timeline is year three and the next option. What we have are integrated programs. Is the slide visible now as integrated programs? Yes, Can yes, I have yes, a confirmation? Very much, very much. Yeah, it yeah. is very much. OK, very much. Right. so here uh, students get a dual degree. Uh, uh, Amrita uh, BTEC from Amrita plus uh, MS from the host university. Uh, they can apply. I'll, I'll come to the detailing of what is the integrated program in the next slide. Uh, the application process starts uh, fifth or sixth semester and here the students have to pay the tuition fee of the host university and take care of the living cost. This is how the integrated program structure is basically you will have. I've given you examples as to what all are the integrated programs we have. If you see, we have a three plus two program, which here you will have three years done at Amrita, the fourth year and additional one year in the host university, which will give you MS. So you will have two degrees BTEC from whichever program you're having it, you're doing at Amrita plus MS from the host university. So I've given example like we have a memo MOU with KTH Royal Institute of Technology Sweden for this program. So uh, you have about um, um, a couple of students, at least 10 of them going every year from across the campuses for this program. And the selection is based on again um, your uh, CGPA while you're entering your fifth semester or sixth semester and it's very competitive. Then you have a four plus one option, uh, which is uh, uh, four years in Amrita. Plus you get to do one year, one, one year extra in the in the host university, which gives you 
four plus one integrated. You have a BTEC from Amrita and a, uh, the uh, one year from the host university where you get your masters. So here we have, I've got UN University of New Mexico and Oakland University, Michigan, uh, which offer uh, this kind of program. You have a host of other lists of universities also in a, listed out in the website, which which give you integrated programs which come into this. Then the, th the, the third kind of um, um, uh, model what we have is three years at Amrita, final year of BTEC in the host university, plus you get to do the masters in that particular host university for two years. The advantage you here is you must you must be wondering what is the difference in your to say again the five years what I'm starting to get my masters here. When you finish your BTEC final year in that particular university, let us say that you're going to a call center of the France University University in France. Final year you will do there and you are given preference or you become one of the student of the university. So your master's program entry is very easy for you. You don't have to follow a typical international student route to do a master's program in a particular university. You, you, you become a student of the university there. So that advantage you're getting here in the three plus one plus two program. So these are the two uh, student exchange programs and integrated programs are the ones which through Amrita, through MOUs with Amrita, which you can take it up with the help of the host universities or you know the, the total of about 200 plus uh, combinations of universities what we have. I'm just showing you what, how many universities we have and just showing you the logos of those universities with which we have MOUs. So this is uh, a, a small information about what is uh, international programs. I think if there are any questions related to it, um, the students want to ask up, up, if you've received, you can start doing it, Mr. Krishnan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to run the PPT once again? It's just 10 slides so that you know students know you know what I was talking about. Uh, what is uh, what is Dean's take on this, sir? What is your take on this? Uh, Ma'am wants to run it through. You can run it through. There's no problem at all. At least seeing is believing. So I think you can just run those uh, missed slides. Just run it through with a few words of yours. No issues at all. All Super. right. Uh, you what can we can do. Um, uh, Ms. Shubha, you can um, yeah. ignore the curriculum part uh, because okay. all that information is available in the website. Number of minimum yeah. credits and all that. What you can do is just uh, showcase the international part. I think uh, that that was covered in the last four slides. I think then. I think uh, the best right. thing is we yeah. tell the participants uh, www.amrita.edu has all the required all information. Right. If you have questions, we are always here to answer them. Yeah, yeah, I think we can start with the questions. Uh, Mr. See what, what what I mean? Some, somebody asked me one question on this is uh, what is the G? I mean, what is this I mean, credit uh, we should score uh, to avail the scholarship for further years? Is it something to do with uh, uh, I mean international options or I don't know, but uh, uh, from my understanding it would be for while the time while the time they join us, but then uh, we could always uh, put it across saying that uh, uh, to get on to this uh, international uh, courses, integrated courses, the international university, is there any minimum score CGPA that one has to have uh, to get admission into those universities? Uh, could we just throw some light on this doubt of uh, one of the students? Yeah. Yes. So I, I would uh, like to answer this in two parts. One uh, with the MOUs with what we have uh, for the exchange programs and uh, integrated programs. As I told you, a minimum of uh, seven and above CGA is preferred. Uh, seven and above, when I say 7.5, should be fine for them to apply because it's highly competitive. Even, uh, even not just for the student exchange or the integrated programs, let's say that they want to go for their master's after BTEC, any university across the globe. Uh, uh, 7.5 is an ideal score for them. It means that you know they have the standard uh, thing uh, to meet up with the international requirements. Universities in US prefer that definitely and universities which are higher ranked in the QS and all prefer such kind of a CGPA. Yeah. Is this uh, integrated courses or going abroad for doing your MS uh, jointly with Amada School of Engineering? Is it available for all the students across all the four campuses? Yes, 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 it is uh, available for all the students. All the if that's the case, like one of the students have now asked a question, you know, who would be issuing the degree certificate? Is it a jointly with Amada School of Amada Vishwavidyapidam and the foreign university? 
How, you will uh, who have, would issue the certificate? I mean, that's a question uh, which is coming here. The, the BTEC certificate will be given by Amrita and the MS certificate will be given by the host university. Oh, wonderful. So I think that sums up all. And as I see, no further questions, uh, Subha ma'am, it would be time for us to uh, say thank you to all uh, three of you for uh, sparing your time with us. And, uh, uh, you know, this has been a real direction in terms of uh, all those clarities which our students wanted uh, before they join our university. So thank you, sir, Dean, sir. Thank you, Deputy Dean, sir. Thank you, Subha for uh, spending your valuable time with us and uh, briefing elaborately on the doubts what uh, the students were carrying in their minds. And I'm sure with all these deliberations, each of them today will go with an open mindedness and then come and join us in the future. So thanks once again for uh, your time. And of course, uh, special thanks must be mentioned to those parents uh, who have who had joined us for uh, viewing this Bisha. And hopefully we will see you again at 10 for Bisha on the placement front as well as a brief on Amrita School of Engineering, Chennai. So this is Medhul Krish signing off from Amrita Vishal Vidya Pira So till we meet again, I'm Shuaya. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.